Hey everyone, welcome to our second video in a two-part series on the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. For a quick refresher, let's recall that this curve shows us how well our blood carries and releases oxygen molecules. In our last video, we went over the basics, but now let's take a moment and dive into some of the more advanced pieces of this puzzle. You may be asking, why does this quote-unquote normal relationship look like a curve and not a straight line up to the left? Due to a phenomenon called positive cooperativity, hemoglobin's desire or affinity for oxygen increases as it fills up its available slots for oxygen to connect to, of which there's four. Simply put, it wants more as it gets more. As we look at our curve, let's go to the very end of a healthy patient. When we hit 100 millimeters of mercury on our partial pressure, we're talking about the pressures at the pulmonary capillaries. These capillaries have a high percentage of saturated hemoglobin molecules which makes sense because it is here where the hemoglobin are being loaded up with oxygen to deliver to the tissues. If we look at the body or slanted portion of the curve, we see our pressures drop to roughly 26 to 27. For a normal patient, this is gonna be right at 26.6 on average. And you'll notice that our saturation is around 50%. This portion of the curve represents the systemic capillaries in the body tissues. You may see this portion of the graph labeled P50 in some texts. Think of this section as muscle. In the muscle, we see oxygen being taken to and dropped off at the tissues that need it to perform their functions. So it makes sense that the pressures here would be lower so oxygen can be delivered easily, and it's also why we would see such a low oxygen saturation percentage. But let's dive into what happens when we have a right or left shift of this curve. So, what is causing this rightward shift? It's a reduction in our affinity for oxygen by the hemoglobin molecules. This is caused by physiological states that are increasing our need for oxygen at the systemic tissue or muscle. So let's review what they are. With a rightward shift, we see a decrease in pH or an increase in the acidity of the blood, which also causes an increase in pCO2. With this, we also see an increase in temperature. Conversely, when we talk about a leftward shift of our curve, we see an increase in the affinity for oxygen by the hemoglobin molecules. Typically speaking, this will be occurring in the lungs, which is helpful because think left and lungs both start with L. Here we see an increase in our pH or alkalinity of the blood through respiratory mechanisms. So think of someone who is breathing off CO2. They'll have an increase in their blood pH and a decrease in pCO2. And because air is cooler than our body temp, we can see a decrease in temperature as well. I hope this clears up some of the confusion around this topic. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more great content. Thanks for watching.